everybody and welcome back to yet another Washington Football Maniacs video here. My name is Greg, your sexy beast. Welcome everybody and today we are talking about round number two and three. <laughs> Rounds two and three of the NFL Draft of 2022 for the Washington Commanders. And before we start talking about that, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit that red notification bell as well. And with that said, let's get into today's video. So in round two, Washington decided that they need it to pick up a defensive tackle because, as we all know, we are not extending Deron Payne. We are not giving him any more money, it seems like. Maybe. Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen with Deron Payne. But with that said, we are not extending him, so we need it to go and we need it to fill some holes. And so we filled that hole with uh, Fidarian Mathis. Fedarian Mathis. There you go, folks. Fedarian Mathis, defensive tackle. And guess what? He's out of Alabama. Who would have ever thought that we would ever draft anybody out of Alabama, right? Especially for the defense. But yet another Alabama kid. Uh, big guy. He seems to be built about the same as any other of our guys that we draft out of Alabama. Second round pick. Pick number 47. If we look at some of his stats here, uh, his uh, draft prospects, uh, he graded out at a 6.27. Um, will eventually be considered maybe an average starter. So, you know, not going to be a necessarily a Pro Bowl type of guy, but he's going to definitely come off the bench into rotation. You know, he's going to be able to put in some quality minutes for the Washington Commanders. Um, he is 6'4", 310 pounds. Um, he's got a, a wingspan of 34 uh, and 5 eighths inches, a hands 10 and 3 eighths inch. Okay, well, all right. Um, he uh, was a redshirt senior. So, you know, it seems like Ryan Rivera and Martin Mayhew was really targeting a lot of players that spent all four seasons or all four years in college, which for me personally, I think that's a great thing because more years that you're going to spend in college, you're going to be a little bit more mature. Um, I, I love maturity in some of these players because I feel like not only are they going to hopefully translate better into the NFL and be a little bit more mature, um, with things, uh, you know, on on the job, so to speak, but also in life as well. Because a lot of times you get these kids who they play one year or so and then they get drafted and they're thrown out in the world. They're given all of this money. that They don't know how to handle it. Handle it. So I, I tend to, you know, think that that is a very important trait for these players. So... Alabama kid, Roll Tide, hey, who would have ever thought, right? I'm being sarcastic with that. Then we get into round three. So round three, we decided to go for our running back. And guess who we pick up? Brian Robinson Jr. Again, Crimson Tide, Alabama. Uh, pick number 98. And this was a guy who had zero fumbles in his career at Alabama. Let me repeat that. Zero fumbles at Alabama. And out of, I forget how many carries, like 200 some carries, he only had about 43 stops for no gain. I mean, that is, honestly, that is a tremendous average. So nine times out of 10, he, he's going to wind up getting some positive yards. He's not going to be knocked backwards more than, uh, or he's just not going to be knocked backwards, right? And he's not fumbling the ball. He's carrying the ball high and tight. He's a bruiser. You know, you go look at his highlights. You can see that he doesn't get stopped on the first uh, hit. 
he, he's like a pinball machine. He's able to to get hit, to stay up, to, to bounce off of these tacklers, to keep on going. He's going to be basically a better uh, Peyton Barber, in my, in my opinion. So now you're going to have Antonio Gibson, um, who's going to be what I consider more of our gadget type of running back. He's going to be the guy who's going to be able to catch some passes out of the backfield. He's going to be our, our first, uh, you know, first down back. You're going to have J.D. McKissick, who's going to be your second down back, third down back, third and short. You're going to have this guy, Brian Robinson. And, you know, we look at his stats. Um, again, eventually be an average starter. Uh, I'm sorry, I am. I actually put in the wrong graphic there. That's John Dotson. I meant to put in... Brian Robertson. Oh, oh, oh man, that is so. Oh. Anyway, okay. All right. Well, you know, I've already talked about John Dotson. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, my bad. Uh, but I will tell you, um, I really like the pick of, of Brian uh, Robertson. Uh, I do. I, I love this pick. I knew that the commanders were going to try to pick up a running back at some point in some round. Um, obviously, they needed it. Now, a lot of people are asking, what about, you know, um, Jarrett? Uh, Jarrett, he, you know, he, he came in, he was undrafted last year. He put in some quality minutes for us. Uh, Jarrett Patterson, I'm talking about. But, you know, this guy is built to be a short yardage running back, and that's what we need because there are a lot of times we've had like fourth and ones. We couldn't get it, and this guy seems to be somebody who's going to be able to convert those. Peyton Barber converted a lot of those, and so, you know, we, we didn't have Peyton Barber last year. We lost him, so we needed a replacement. I think we got a good replacement in uh, Brian Robinson. So now, you know, the reactions, the social media, uh, precisely Twitter reactions to these pickups. Again, again, I'm just taken back by the overall negativity initial, at least the initial reactions to fans or from fans uh, to these, these draft picks. A lot of people said that they were so perplexed by the uh, Fedarian Mathis pickup in the second round. They said this was this was a huge reach. You know, a lot of people are like, Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew, Mayhew, this is the reason why they got fired in their last jobs, because they are showing you they don't know how to draft. Okay. Um... Uh, you know, I saw this too. You don't draft for need. You draft best player available. Okay, folks, it's not one polar opposite or the other, okay? You obviously do draft for need. Yes, you obviously do draft the best player available. But I think people don't quite understand is you draft for the best player available, but also the best player available for your needs. You don't just go out and like, I mean, if you got a franchise quarterback and you know that there's a franchise quarterback on on the uh, board there, you don't draft him just because he's the best player. I mean, obviously you don't when you know that you got other needs. You're gonna trade down, pick up other draft picks. You're gonna trade down to get into a position to draft other players who are going to be drafted um, for the positions that you need that are more in line with those draft positions right where you're going to be picking at. Does that make sense? So that that is what basically I think the commanders, Ron Rivera and company have tried to do. And you will see in the next video because as we speak, of course, a day three of the draft is going on and we've had a tremendous draft in day three and and i can't wait to do that video but um day two you know it's been a little bit of controversy here uh with with the second round now you know you could say there are so many other needs why did we draft a defensive tackle we got deron Payne, and my thought was before the draft we're obviously trading deron Payne. well 
we didn't trade Deron Payne, and I don't think we're going to trade him at this point. I think we're actually going to play him because if we play him and then he goes off somewhere else, we'll eventually get a um, we'll we'll get draft picks back. It may not be this year, but we will get like a third or something like that back for him in the future. So we will get a draft pick at some point for losing Deron Payne. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but it could work out to where we have Deron Payne and then we have Mathis being able to rotate in. And that's going to really strengthen our defensive line. Remember, we, we lost Matt Ioannidis, right? We lost Tim Settle. So we have to replace those guys. It's very important to keep that defensive front stout. You know, we're going to get Chase Young back. Uh, from his injury. We're getting Montez Sweat. Hopefully he's going to be healthy this year. Of course, we had, we've got Jonathan Allen. So, you know, we got to keep that defensive line stout. So I kind of saw it. But yeah, I may agree. It, it may have been a little bit of a reach. And then, of course, you know, fans were talking about, you know, hearing from Mathis himself. And he said he was surprised he went that high. So then fans just, you were up in arms and say, hey, look, you know, even the player himself is saying that he wasn't worth it. That the player himself said that he should have been a fourth round pick and he got, you know, drafted in the second round. So, you know, that's just more evidence that this front office doesn't know what they're talking about. And then the, you know, Ron Rivera comes out and says, look, you know, he was rated on our boards and other teams' boards as high as the second round, between the second and fourth round. And his agent, Mathis's agent, backed that up too, saying, look, the same. I never tell any of my clients that they, you know, could be drafted this high. I always kind of give them a lower expectation, not to, you know, juice them up too much. And and so I kind of get that, you know, keep them conservative. And so they're they're excited when they're drafted higher. And I get that, you know, it's temper expectations because, you know, this is a life changing event. And so I get it. And uh, so actually, uh, Darian Mathis was drafted really a right around the point of where he was supposed to be drafted at. So it really wasn't a reach. You could argue either way, though. I'm not going to be too upset on, on which side of the fence you're on with this. I think it was a good pick. Were there other picks we could have picked? Sure, but you know, then again, hey, I am not an expert in this. So then we go to Brian Robinson. I absolutely love this pick, and I'm going to show, um, I'm going to show his graphic again. I can't show the other one because it was the wrong graphic. But Brian Robinson again. I mean, this was a great pick because he is an absolute beast, and. We need as much of a strong running game as we possibly can have because A, Carson Wentz needs to have a more confidence in his game. We need to have a strong running game that's going to build up so that we can have such a balanced offensive attack. I mean, think about this now. You know, you got Scott Turner calling the plays. For him to really show his full potential as an offensive coordinator, he can't just have like an all-pass happy offense and not have much in the backfield as far as running game. You know, yes, you got Antonio Gibson, but you can't just run him to death. This is not a video game, right? This is not Madden football. You've got to have some players that you can rotate in there. I mean, yes, I like Jarrett Patterson. And maybe that there can still be a, a position for him on the team. But Jared Patterson cannot be that grounded out, you know, short yardage back, right? I mean, I kind of I kind of compare him to, you know, if I'm thinking back to the yesteryears of, of the Washington Redskins, maybe like a Joe Washington. But, you know, we need our John Riggins. And, and that's who we think that... Maybe um, you know Brian Ro Robinson can be, even though that you know technically Riggins was a you know a fullback and not a running back. But I digress. Anyway, I think that 
Brian Robinson is going to work out nicely. Brian Robinson, J.D. McKissick, and you know uh, Antonio Gibson, the trio back there, making the run game stout. And then you have the receivers that we have picked up. I mean, honestly, I think that that, I mean, I, I, I liked the second and third round, and, and I'm in the minority, obviously, because, again, a lot of fans hated these picks. A lot of fans hated these picks. Some were okay with the running back pick, but a lot of people hated the second round pick. I didn't hate the pick. Um, I would have rather of us gotten an offensive guard um, or maybe a higher um, level safety in the second round because I think we needed some help in the secondary. But we will talk about that in the next video because, you know, at the time of this video, we have already made some tremendous picks there in the, the uh, fourth, fifth rounds and so, yeah, that's the next video. Anyway, let me know in the comments section what you think about rounds two and three. And, hey, just the draft in general up to this point. Um, and then I'll have another video hopefully released tomorrow uh, letting you know my thoughts on the rest of the draft. And then after that, hopefully, I'll try to do an overall summary of the draft, and then we'll, we'll take a look individually at each uh, player that we drafted. We'll talk a little bit more in depth about those guys, and that's coming up later on in the week. Anyway, you guys, thank you for uh, staying with me. Again, please consider subscribing to this channel. I can use your subscriptions. Um, please like, comment, share this video out with your buddies, um, get the word out. And if you really are enjoying this channel, you really want to support this channel, um, take a look down in the description. I've got a link to my Patreon page. Haven't done a lot to it, but I could really use your help on Patreon. Um, any help you can provide me there helps to go toward, I, I invest back into this channel to try uh, to, to build this channel up to make it better, more informative, more entertaining for you guys. So it's all about entertaining, entertaining all of you guys. Uh, maybe I should work on my public speaking skills, this crazy, sexy beast. Anyway, you guys take care. Have a great Saturday and hell to the Washington Commanders.